Good morning, I'm on my way to Skanska. I'm going to meet with Lena Höck today. She's Senior Vice President of Sustainability at Skanska Group. Uh, let's go. Hi, I am Lena Höck and I'm Senior Vice President Sustainability in Skanska Group. All right, Lena, let's talk about sustainability. Why is sustainability important for you guys here at Skanska? At Skanska, we got a pretty early wake up call when it comes to sustainability. For about 20 years ago, we were part of drilling a tunnel where actually the chemicals polluted the water and the, the, the ground around it. And that made us realize the importance of having a sound environmental management system. So we started implementing that in all of our business units across of Skanska. And we have by that also had a structured way of how to identify sustainability risks and also aiming at how can we manage them out on our sites and our projects. And we have several risks that are really important for us to tend to. I already mentioned environment, but of course we are a construction and development company uh, with about more than 30,000 people within our organization, but we have about 250,000 people uh, when it comes to uh, suppliers and, and subcontractors, etc., being a part of the work on our sites. And we need to make sure that all of them actually can be healthy and safe working in our environment, as well as other sustainability risks for us to tend to, of course, ethics and anti-bribery. Quite important, we are a line of business that has quite a lot of public contract and, and public procurement. And for us to make sure that everything is correct, both from our side and the other side, is really of importance. So for us, working in a structured way, setting our code of conduct, we have had it for, we settled it 2002, making sure that all of our employees are trained. About 94% of our employees are actually trained in code of conduct the first month of employment. To us, it's really important to ensure how can we make sure that our sustainability work is all over uh, our operations. In like practical terms, how exactly do you do this? How do you incorporate sustainability into your business model? Well, I talked a lot about the sustainability risks uh, and having a structured way of identifying risks and working with them. The other side is also, of course, understanding the opportunities and the client aspect and the, how clients evaluate and value sustainability. And within our industry, about 10 years ago, a lot of different sustainability certification systems started to emerge. So that means that a building can be uh, then certified, a third party certification, uh, having showing the performance, sustainability performance. And we have several of those certification schemes nowadays. So it's LEED and BRIA, Morsvanen when it comes to building. You have Envision and you have SQL when it comes to infrastructure. And that's of course of such importance because what you can measure, you can also evaluate and it can also be valued. So by that you can actually have the facts and the proof points of the sustainability performance as well as the value that you are actually giving to the customer. So for us, I would say that has been key. And within that, when it comes to all those sustainability certification, most of them, almost all of them started from environment and environmental matters like water, energy, carbon, uh, or materials and how you can reuse materials. But what we have seen the past years is also social sustainability starting to be a emerging part of those uh, environmental certifications adding on. So for example, a green building, it shows that a green building having a better air quality, better lighting, etc. Those are aspects that are actually contributing to the health and the well-being of the people being within the building. So by that, there has actually been a new certification standard emerging for buildings that are adding on the health aspects for, for tenants. It's called well. So nowadays, all of our own produced uh, commercial buildings in Central Europe are actually certified with well because we find it being of a quality that our clients appreciate. How do you believe that investors look upon the value of sustainability? Here it has actually happened a significant change the past five years. The interest for sustainability and green investments has grown exponentially. 
And that is also, of course, connected to that it's possible to measure the performance and by that you can evaluate, compare different performances and also see the value. Yet again, what has been the driving force is the Paris Agreement and that several companies have started to integrate sustainability very clearly into their business models. And that triggers, of course, the mind of an investor. Uh, also, when we see during turbulent times that sustainability investments has actually stand the test. That is also intriguing and inspiring, but foremost, for investors, it is important to be able to show what is the performance and what is the long-term value at the market. And there, several companies has become better and better to show the proof points. Let's talk a little bit about challenges. What do you believe are your biggest challenges in the area of sustainability? We're a large corporation and working with heavy industry construction. Of course, for us, a, a major challenge is always to ensure the safety on site for our people and for the ones being around our site. That, that's always going to be a number one for us to take care of. Uh, also, of course, recognizing that we are having uh, the climate crisis is a long term crisis. We all need to understand how we can contribute to lower the carbon emissions. So for our part, setting a long term goal when it comes to become climate neutral by 2045 across our value chain has spurred a lot of movement towards that direction. And for us, it is really important since our industry stands for about 40% of the carbon emission related to energy. So when we build a building, it's not just going to be there for five or 10 years, it's going to be there for 60, 100 years. If we make it an energy plus house now, we know that we are contributing for decades to come. That is of such importance. And that's why our industry is really a key player when it comes to uh, contribute to solutions when it comes, for example, to climate. So I've read a study done by Albright that measures companies on the stock market and how equal they are in terms of the sex sexes between men and women. So they ranked you as um, being passive, not doing enough. You, you're ranked on the yellow list. Uh, what do you think about this and how do you think you can improve? We are in a male dominated industry. And for us, it is of such importance that we are able to attract and recruit and promote talent and people, uh, no matter what, of course. So we should not have any biases. We need to make sure that we have an inclusive work environment. We have seen signs of us moving forward. We have an equal gender equal board. We have a, a third of our group leadership team are uh, women. And we have actually improved. So the past year we have improved from senior managers going from 22% being women to actually 25% 2019. So we see signs of improvements, but this is a long term work where we really have to understand how can we attract women to our industry? How can we make sure that no matter any biases, gender or cultural or religion, how can we make sure that people actually thrive, develop and are blossoming within our corporation? That's a key for us.